John, being here with you today is so meaningful to me. It's almost, almost a religious experience to remember how much I learned with you for the years we spent together, how much I appreciate how much you taught me during my doctoral program. And throughout my career, no matter what I've done in different fields, I've told many people how much I've learned from you in how to think. The science was fascinating, of course, but how to think is more important. So today, as I'm interested in the human brain and the human brain function, describe some of the research that you've done recording okay. from single cells okay. the incredible uh, capability that we have to get information from single okay. neurons. Well, uh, the, the, the best known thing today is what is called the MRI. That's uh, usable to locate a region of the brain in relation with behavior. But they're still uh, very active, they're probably more uh, informative from the point of view of the, of the function. Um, a better technique, which is the, the single unit recording, which is uh, uh, recording from single cell. Now, what, what can you uh, <laughs> learn from a single cell? Because there are billions there are, of there them. There are billions of them, uh, but what you, 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 you see really the message, which is transmitted from a, from a region to another one. And uh, if there is a computation in the brain, and there are computation in the brain, then we, you, we, you have you, your representation of one stage. Uh, do the, 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 does the signal uh, result from the addition or the multiplication or the transformation of another signal? This is a kind of thing that, that you learn and you are that way able to say this kind of operation is occurring at that place. So l let's just describe brain function in terms of this information transition. Every neuron works by this pulse of electricity, if you will. Yes. And by recording in the brain the information of this electrical pulse, even from one neuron, you're able to get information? Oh, yes, because you know what kind of transformation is occurring, you know. One of the problems that we have been studying, for instance, is simply this, it, it's, it appears simple. Uh, localization of an object in the world. Uh, how to do that? You see it. Visual visually. localization. And how do you prove it is there? <laughs> By pointing to it or looking at it. Well, the, the signal, when it arrives, it is a signal that is transmitted to, to your visual cortex. But in the visual cortex, there are in, uh, a billion of cells that have a very small window on the world, and they don't see more than what it is in that window. Of course, they can see orientation of the stimuli or the color of the stimuli, but all this information is just like uh, in a camera. So you've in fact used eye movement yes. as a way of, 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 uh, of, of having a window on how the brain is processing information because you have a, a nice output. You can see the eye moving yes. in, in response to something. Yes. And so then you are recording single cells where in the brain in correlating it with Eye movement. Well, many many different many places. places that, that we are we make a distinction between the visual region uh, in all over the, the the brain, in the brain stem, in the thalamus, in the cortex, and also the, what is we call the oculomotor region. Oculomotor means those motor region that uh, move the the eyes. And what can you learn by recording from single neurons in each of these places? What, 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 what conclusions can you come to? Well, you, have, you understand how it is done, because at a, a, a priori, you don't know how it, what are the different stages in this operation. We have to look at the brain as a computer. And as in a computer, you have a program, and you go to the, pro the, the different step of the program. At that, at that level, let's say the brain stem, you have that step. At the, when you come to the cortex, you have the further step. 
All of these integrate together to give you the a coherent uh, a picture of eye movement so you can track things in our environment. Yes, yes, that's the overall picture. But of course, what we are interested is the, in, the, in the different <laughs> steps, how <laughs> the brain compute. That's the important thing. Right. H how then can you um, uh, uh, take single units at different parts of the brain and see their sequences? How can you turn that into meaningful information? Uh, because you can ask the question, what is this uh, firing, this particular pattern of firing? Tell me what, what is it in relation with the stimulus or what is it in relation with the movement that's going to. The, 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 these are the intermediate steps. In the, the, in the operation. And then you can try to, 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 to build a model and uh, having the information on the different nodes, yeah. you put the thing together, you try to put the thing together. Now this becomes exceedingly complicated and what is so awesome is that this is, the, this is so complicated but yet it's something that is reasonably mechanical and reasonably simple. We're not studying consciousness or cognitive, but something seemingly simple, but it involves such a rich uh, 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 complexity of information. That's right, but at the time that you were uh, it, in your lab, many people were most interested in, in this general problem, in particular the rhythm, the the rhythm in the EEG yes, and to right. explain this thing. But uh, I've seen a, a, uh, a tendency to try to, to come closer to behavior. That is, we, we, the problem that we were studying, we were in the middle of the brain with no, no, no we did not know exactly where yeah. the access to the stimulus and the, right. and the movement. Now we are taking a whole paradigm where we have stimulus response, the whole link, and we can just study the, the cells on the pathways in the brain that go from one stimulus to the response, which is motor. D describe an experiment that you can do that in this modern sense. So what, what would a typical experiment be? Well, and a, and a typical experiment would be, would be, and actually, technically, you can see it very well, we are able to measure uh, eye movement and display them in online on a scope. And we are at the same time capable of uh, measuring the position of the eye so that the experimenter can see the, what the subject do and what, how the, the subject respond to that. And you find that the, the, the gaze of the, the subject is following the stimulus when you move it. So we have a loop, experimental wow. loop, which is representing the environment. No, we take that loop and we go with the stimulus it, to, the, to the eye. We can look at it in terms of vision. We can look at the, the production of the movement online also and display uh, the, 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 what, what a, a particular neuron that is doing something particular in relation with that link. So you correlate this loop of behavior that you see the whole behavior that you control and then by recording from single neurons you find those neurons that that react to yes. this behavioral pattern that you uh, control. Oh, but we know where they are, or oh, we hope we do. <laughs> uh, and for instance, I was talking about the MRI on human. These are the, 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 the technique on human to know her how, where, where this neuron are supposed to, to be. Yeah, but when you get into that spot, if you're looking for one neuron, there may be a uh, hundred million neurons in that spot. That's true, but you see what happened is that in general, in that spot, there are only four or five types of neurons. Oh, that's good. Uh, so they are not doing all the, the they are not doing all, all the same thing because when some of them are dealing with that part of the visual field, and while others are doing exactly the same operation, but another part of the visual yeah, field. Yeah. So you, you can see the same kinds of pattern, but reacting to different parts of the visual field. Yes. 
Oh yes, of course. So you can recognize a pat a patent like a like a like a an artist a signature. You you style. I mean you you can recognize this. Yeah, way you don't. Yeah, you, of course you realize that when you take a neuron, you don't choose your neuron. You have yeah. to take it, and <laughs> it is given to you by chance. You're happy to get one yeah. that works. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. So so and then uh, you can try to to uh, to to know what it does. It does. No, there's, there are also no uh, the, uh, experiments that are done in the opposite way. Uh, it's called inverse correlation. In the usual experiment that you were doing, you were giving a stimulus and asking what is the response. Right, right. No, what they do is uh, uh, we look at the activity, for instance, of a, a visual neuron and ask the question, what was the stimulus that caused that oh, response? Oh. Uh, presenting all kinds of stimuli and then by computer manipulation detecting which stimulus was responsible. So if you reflect back on 50 years of recording single units from its early days through very sophisticated computer modeling, what, what feeling does it get, give you emotionally to think about the progress that brain research has made in understanding how the brain functions? Well, uh, when I started, I wanted to understand the brain. Yeah. Uh, and as I'm finishing, I don't understand the brain. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I understand it better probably than many people, and I'm satisfied with that. <laughs> but of course, there are many more progresses to be made, and uh, one of the typical progress is that we don't have any idea of our, how we are thinking. And I am not sure that, that uh, it's going to be given directly by even the single unit recording. Uh, it will probably have to depend on people who are going to, to, uh, to make models. Uh, if they have the possibility to deal with as many unit as we have in our brain that's been billions <laughs> and have it done as a population and study them uh, that then we have some uh, we will get some idea on how how this thing because obviously the, the, uh, the brain does not calculate like a calculator at all there's no calculator when you ask uh, four plus four <laughs> there's no calculator in the brain and there's no computer it does not work in either as a computer it has its own way it its own way i think is by learning mm. so by transforming the population that's education that's a, that's what we i think we learn